Good morning once again students. Today we are going to talk about Ranisa sinuses. The question is of what importance are Ranisa sinuses to ophthalmology practice? Okay. I'll let you know by the end of this class. Listen. When we talk about Ranisa sinuses, these are cavities that are found within bones and these bones are found around the nose so pranasal sinuses are cavities that are found in the bones surrounding the nose para para means surrounding so anasal comes from nose so pranasa means surrounding the nose or I'll say nasal cavity. So pranasal sinuses are sinuses or cavities that are found as extension of the nasal cavity. As extension of what? The nasal cavity. So there are four major uh, pranasal sinuses and their names are derived from the bones in which they are found so we have the frontal sinus here found in the frontal bone ethmoidal sinus that are found within the ethmoidal bone maxillary sinuses that are found within the maxilla and in my other slides that i'm about to show you will have the chance to see the sphenoidal sinus which is found within what the sphenoidal bone so what are the functions of the pranasal sinuses it will interest you to know that because they are cavities that are found within bone these sinuses lighten the weight of the head they lighten the weight of the head Number two, they do not only humidify, but at the same time heat the air which we inhale. They humidify and heat the air which we inhale. At the same time, they increase speech resonance. Speech resonance. For example, as I'm talking to you, you can hear my voice clearly, but for the presence of the pranasal sinuses you wouldn't hear my voice clearly so that is what i mean by speech resonance they also serve as crampo zone to protect the vital structures in case of facial trauma the major vital structure here is the brain so uh, consider this as a vehicle okay the crampal zone may constitute, for example, the boot or the bonnet, so that when there is an impact from surrounding vehicles, oncoming vehicles, or vehicles that are coming from behind, when they hit your vehicle, they protect the bonnet or the boot will be crumpled, okay? They'll be damaged by you, the driver, or the passengers in the car will be protected because the boot was there or the bonnet was spoiled by you the passenger you are inside so that is the crampo zone bit that um, is also good to know that it supports the immune defense of the nasal cavity all right so it is also important to know that histologically each sinus is lined by ciliated pseudostratified epithelium with mucus secreting goblet cells. Okay, so this so the, this helps drainage of the sinuses. So every sinus is lined by mucus secreting goblet cells that are continuously producing mucus. And this mucus is drained and ends up within what the nasal cavity okay 
So, for example, you realize that okay so here you are this is the frontal sinus as you can see here these are the ethmoidal sinus okay at the ethmoidal bone this is the maxillary sinus okay this phrenoid sinus is found here all right a bit posterior to the nasal cavity so let's talk about their shapes their shapes the frontal sinus, as you find here, is triangularly shaped. Triangularly shaped. Okay. The ethmoidal sinus is in form of pyramid. There are several groups, okay, in form of pyramid over here. We also have the maxillary sinus, which is also in form of what? Pyramid. Said so that the base is found are towards the nasal cavity whereas the apex is towards the zygoma okay all right so let's continue here so here you are look at the nasal cavity all right and you have the sphenoid sinus over here it's the shape the geometrical shape resembles that of q so it could be that in shape and it's important to know that even around the sphenoidal sinus, there are very important anatomical structures. Of course, the sphenoidal sinus is found in the sphenoidal bone. All right? So, this is the cella tessica, all right, where the pituitary gland finds itself. And as we talked about in the previous lessons, on top of the cella tessica, you might you have the optic chiasma at each side you have the cavernous sinus which contains very important structures internal carotid artery the third the fourth the fifth the first second branch of fifth cranial nerve the uh, sympathetic fibers from the carotid pleasures and so on and so forth so very important anatomical structures are found here okay so, um, this is another place where you can talk about the sinuses in a more clarified pattern. So, you have the frontal sinus found within the frontal bone. Look at the ethmoidal air cells or the ethmoidal sinuses. Okay, so this is the anterior. Okay, there are three major types of the ethmoidal sinuses the anterior the middle and then the posterior okay here you are another view of the sphenoidal sinus and this is the maxillary sinus so i want to clarify the shapes first so this triangularly shaped the frontal bone is triangularly shaped the ethmoidal sinuses are uh, shaped in form of pyramid in form of what pyramid okay the sphenoidal sinus is cuboidal in shape now the last but not the least and is the maxillary sinus which is the most inferior and the biggest of all the pranasal sinuses as i said is pyramidal in shape the base is towards the nasal cavity while the apex is towards the zygoma so there is uh, the need to realize that there, uh, when you talk about eye care, it's important to lead ourselves with the paranasal sinuses. I'll give you a few examples. So, the roof, the roof of the maxillary sinus constitutes the floor of the orbit. The roof of the maxillary sinus constitutes the floor of the orbit. And as you can realize, this is the frontal sinus is the most superior, and the maxillary sinus is the most inferior. This is the sphenoid, and that is the ethmoidal. All of them are found surrounding the eyeball and then the orbit. 
because of anatomical proximity, it's important to know about them because there could be problems from the eye that affect the sinuses or problems from the sinuses that affect the eyeball. For example, in upper respiratory tract infections, okay, as we said, the as we breathe in air through our nose into the uh, our lungs, but they will pass through the nasal cavities where the sinuses will help to heat this particular air that we have inhaled. If there are there is any infection from the sinuses, it can affect into the respiratory tract and cause upper respiratory tract infection. In that same order, upper respiratory tract infections can bring about what? Infection of the sinuses. And once there's sinusitis, it easily the infection can easily get into the orbit and cause inflammation within the orbit and also lead to orbital cellulitis, which is also an emergency. So there's something that I need to tell you here. Among all the sinuses, any of them, when they get inflamed, they can cause orbital cellulitis. Orbital cellulitis. But there is one, which is the ethmoidal sinus, which is the most common source of what? Infection or inflammation to cause orbital cellulitis. The reason is that the ethmoidal sinus has anatomical structure known as zucca candles dehiscence. Zucca candles dehiscence. These are small orifices, perforations that are found in the thin wall within the ethmoid that communicate the sinus to the orbit. So, germs, microorganisms within the particular sinus. When they get inflamed, infected, they easily transmit the infection from the ethmoid into the orbit. Or, in fact, sometimes when someone gets orbital cellulitis, the causative agents, the microorganisms, can also travel to the zucca candles dehiscence and enter into the ethmoid and cause ethmoidal sinusitis. And once one ethmoid is affected, the rest can easily be affected. So, there's another thing you should know that when there's growth of any, when there's growth from any of the sinuses, for example, maxillary sinus, when there's a growth from it, as I said, the roof of the maxillary sinus constitutes the floor of the orbit. So, any growth from the maxillary sinus can push the eyeball upwards. Any growth from the frontal sinus will not only push the eyeball downwards, but laterally. Any growth from the ethmoid or ethmoidal sinus can push the eyeball laterally. And when your eyeball is not well aligned, it can give you either, it can give you double vision, which will end up in either diplopia or confusion. Now, so, uh, it is uh, worth knowing about the paranasal sinuses because they surround the nose, the nasal cavity, they surround the eyeball. So, therefore, it's important to know about them. So, thank you very much for listening. We'll meet in class and we'll talk about this again. Put down your difficulties so that when you meet me, we can clarify them. Have a nice day, students.